Very quickly, I'm going to give you an agenda for the evening. I'm going to talk slightly longer than normal for an introduction because I want to give you a bit of a sense for the competition, the design competition that we're going to be rolling out. Uh, so I beg your indulgence there for a second. Um, and after I give you the, the overview of the project, I'm going to turn the floor over to our speakers for the evening. Uh, Lance Borellowitz, Cornelia Oberlander, and Bing Tom. We're very delighted to have them here. After that, uh, we're going to open things up for dialogue. And um, certainly, I know typically you have floating mics that go through the audience. We don't have that here this evening. So you're going to have to do something that I'm typically not very good at, which is standing up and projecting. We would very much like to hear from you in terms of your opinions on public squares and public plazas that you visited, any questions that you might have for the speakers. After that, in the spirit of returning to school in September, we do have a little homework to pass along to you. I hope you'll indulge us with that. It's a fairly simple, straightforward affair. Um, but please do hang around as we wind things up because you'll get some very interesting questions we'd like you to take home with you. So the Vancouver Public Space Network was started about three years ago now, late 2005, early 2006. And it's an organization, uh, very grassroots initially, but now a registered nonprofit that works on outreach, education, and advocacy pertaining to Vancouver's public realm. And I was looking through the notes from our early meeting, uh, our early meetings uh, the other day, flipping through them, a little bit of organizational nostalgia. And I realized right from the very, very first public meeting that we had back in 2006, that we've been hearing one question almost every meeting that we have very consistently. And it's the same question that I presume has brought a lot of you here tonight. How come Vancouver doesn't have a central public square like so many other cities? We have Victory Square, of course, which is a magnificent space in its own right. We also have other smaller plazas, such as the one, uh, the two rather, located upstairs in the VPL. And if you want a little barroom trivia, have a look at the commemorative plaque up in the North Plaza. I think it must have been one of the only things that Kim Campbell had a chance to actually dedicate in her short tenure as Prime Minister. But it's there for all to see. Of course, public squares all have their little nooks and crannies and, and bits of uh, history associated with them. In Vancouver, of course, we have lots of other parks as well, and that's something that gets held up quite a lot uh, as a, a bit of a showpiece for the city. Uh, of course, parks offer some of the same functionality as public squares, but they're not quite the same thing. In terms of the type of social mil milieu that often gets associated with public squares, the answer in Vancouver, sadly, is most often realized in the two dozen or so steps that grace the north end of the art gallery, or rather the south end. Not very square-like, granted, despite the name. So was it just that the city was built this way? To be sure, Vancouver has even had spaces that function as central gathering places. I mentioned Victory Square a moment ago. Uh, there are other aspects of the city's social history and, and built history that speak to that type of gathering space. For example, many years uh, ago, uh, between about 1901 and 1950, uh, at, uh, at the junction of Camby Street and Beatty Street, just down the street, uh, there was a place called Larwell Park. It's now a parking lot, ironically enough. Uh, but between 1901 and 1950, it was one of the central gathering places in the city. It was a space for celebration, for convening big public meetings and gatherings. And then, unfortunately, it was sold off and converted to a transportation hub. So one of the great gathering places that we had actually um, was converted and lost. Other spaces were also intended to function in, as gathering spaces in the city. You have Queen Elizabeth Theatre Plaza, which, when it was built, was conceived as being a, a very important space in its own right. Uh, it was going to be a hub for all sorts of social activity. But for those of you that have ever walked by it, I mean, prior to its current construction, you'll see or you'll know that it was a fairly barren space. Not many people went there for one reason or another. So asking the question, where is the square, which is what we've chosen to title our design competition, leads to other questions. Where is the square been? Where could it have been? Not too long ago, I had a chance to cruise a bookstore downtown. And quite by chance, I came across a five-decade-old decade municipal document. Uh, it's called the City of Vancouver Five-Year Plan, 1959 to 1963. It's a bit of a capital allocations document, similar to the capital plan that you'll be voting on in this November's municipal contest. I was quite struck by it. Fifty years ago, the City of Vancouver produced a five-year plan that was intended to govern this period of 59 to 63. And in it, very prominently, they call for a civic square or public open space in the downtown area 
which is at present, I'm quoting, completely lacking in such an amenity except for Victory Square and the paved forecourt of the new auditorium, which was Queen Elizabeth. They even mentioned a few analogs as well. And actually, if Jason's available, you could just flip on the presentation. I'll just show you a couple of the ideas that they had in mind. Um, in particular, they were uh, able to name three spaces that they thought were quite, um, quite useful examples. One was Union Square in San Francisco. One was Parachine Square in Los Angeles. And the third was Mellon Square in Pittsburgh. And I just put these up now, and Jason was very good to show you a whole bunch of pictures of other squares earlier. But these were the three that they had in mind back in the, the 1950s, 50 years ago. Uh, the rationale for these particular spaces, uh, well, as the document identifies, they were all built with underground parking, which was a key feature of design at the time, a very car-centric focus. And they continue as well that public squares of this type, with lawns and trees and other landscaping, provide not only a public amenity, but as part of the total concept of downtown planning. That's something that I think is a very key feature of public squares, and it's certainly part of the rationale why we're having the contest. Well, they conclude their little essay on, on public squares by saying that they recommended that the city allocate $2 million to set aside for the project. That's $2 million in 1958 dollars, so uh, it's probably like a billion nowadays, I'm not sure. And then they say, the site will be determined at a later date. Well, it's been a little while. If you've ever traveled outside of the city, particularly to other places around the globe, you'll get a fairly quick appreciation of the important role that such squares play in other urban and semi-urban environments. They define almost more than any other architectural feature in a city or town, a sense of place, be it for the villages in England, houses in Central America, squares in Asia, or piazzas in Europe, many of which you saw on the slideshow. They are, in fact, a place where you can gather, watch people, grab a cafe, a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, play chess, listen to buskers and performers, participate in a protest rally. They cover all the spectrums of social activity that we might associate with a good, vibrant urban fabric. 